Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? Good afternoon, astro lovers, and welcome to another episode of This Week with Drunk Astrology. My name is Graham Breitenstein, your astrologer and the creator and founder of Drunk Astrology. Here on this podcast, we discuss the weekly cosmic weather, and this report is for the week of December 13th through the 19th, 2021. That's right. I'm going to keep saying it. We are two and a half weeks away from the end of 2021. Who's ready for that ending? All in favor, say aye. Aye! (laughs) Oh, man. We are... We're reporting a little bit later today because there's just a lot going on. The um, oh, the drunk astrology family and extended family has experienced some man. Well, we're just in a time of reflection and and change and transformation. 
because the eclipses have done what the eclipses do, and it's hitting me, it's hitting my partner, and it's hitting our family. So, you know, in the in the effort to apply astrology to real life and to, I guess, prove or show that, you know, even... Even astrologers, you know, we're not numb, we're not immune to aspects, even though we chart aspects and we chart the transits and the cycles and the stories and we make it all make sense. Um, we, we are still, you know, we still experience it, we still feel it. And um, so in, in the effort to show all of that, I'll share everything that's on my mind, on on my plate, and on my family's plate, and um, how how we're kind of working with it and dealing. So first and foremost, today, Monday, December 13th, is the anniversary of my mom's death. She died December 13th, 1988. In a car accident on her way to work, she slid on a patch of ice and didn't have her seatbelt on and was, you know, hit the patch of ice, was flown into opposite traffic, got hit, and tossed from the car. Um, So as I record this podcast, um, I've got a Polaroid, one of my favorite Polaroids of her, right next to me. And leaning up against one of my candles, actually, the Virgo candle that's burning. And those of you that are longtime listeners, you know, you know, since the 29th of November, which is her birthday, um, you know, I've been talking about her, sharing, sharing her in, you know, on Instagram and in lives and on this podcast. So today is just always one of those days where, you know, I pause and reflect and even though I don't have memories of her myself, I am still, you know, grateful for all that she's that she did for me, bringing me into this world. And I know from her mom, my mamma, that, you know, she knew that I was something special and felt that way about me and my two older brothers. So this is, you know, with Venus diving into Pluto, which is the underworld, you know, that that conjunction on Saturday was the first of three, but, you know, really taking us deep, taking us beneath the surface and doing what we need to do while we're there and changing and transforming. Now, um, in other news, uh, those of you who have been around for a while, you know that I've had Rocket, my cosmic fur companion. Well, he was just neutered on Friday and he is, uh, as the vet described him, he's uh, quite bouncy. So he is on sedatives all the way through this week um, in an effort to keep his energy levels down so that his wound can heal. And even sedatives are proving to not keep this dog calm and down he's just more confused and and still trying to follow me everywhere and um it's you know with the cone around his neck you know hand feeding hand watering and having to be really strategic about when i take him out for a walk because i live in a high dog area high foot traffic area and the second he sees any living thing he loses his mind (laughs) so balancing that um and for the last bit of update um my partner uh my boyfriend who's um been in my life since the beginning of the gemini sagittarius eclipses last may of 2020 um he has experienced a tremendous eclipse moment and loss. Um, We we said goodbye to his dad um, under the Pisces quarter moon on Friday, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, and have been working with that and... (sighs) Sorry. 
Oh, when I tell you. <sighs> oh, you got to use your voice, Graham. <laughs> oh, we've been um working with that energy and to talk about transformation. Um you know, this is a uh, this is what eclipses can do and um you know they oh they can slam dunk us you know they throw us forward they um you know throw us in uncharted territory ready or not and um that is certainly what they've done um um to him and to his family and you know just you know being <clears throat> being someone's partner and support system and wanting to be there and you know with all these other things not able to be there um physically um his family lives in Detroit and uh, you know so of course he's back with his family and I will join them at at a certain point um once funeral arrangements are made um but you know, really hard, really hard, and you know, in true eclipse nature, everything, everything happens all at once. You know, it's one of those. It when it rains, it pours. Um, you know, it's like the same day rocket gets neutered is the same day. You know, things went south, and it was just like really, you know. And this is this is why I've been saying for the last several weeks and definitely while we built up to eclipse season this is why i say offload <laughs> offload as you go into eclipse season um because you you just want to have the space to be able to support to process to deal um to to deal with everything that comes up um when an eclipse moment happens now I know some of my clients, you know, feel like, you know, I'm kind of, I've been okay. I've been kind of like skating by, but the people around me, um, you know, and that's the thing. When when you yourself kind of get to evade eclipse stories like these, um, you know, you you create space so that you can be there for someone else and that you can support someone else because it is so important and – you don't want to get caught up in um, trivial things that don't matter when there's really important moments and really important times, uh, you know, for someone to lean on you and rely on you. And if you're focused on other things that just really aren't that important, you know, you just go, wow, okay, let me get myself sit back down and get back to reality. Also, at the same time, uh, there were tornadoes that rampaged through Kentucky, which is where my family lives. Now, thankfully, my family was fine, but, um, you know, that was still all happening Friday, Saturday, and not knowing until I got in touch with everyone. You know, it is made for a very gnarly and intense... Um, 72 hours so sorry to sorry to get emotional um but i don't want to act like this isn't a heavy time and act like this isn't something that other people can experience during eclipses and um stay with us we'll be right back Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity, love and relationships, connection. 
all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust. So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already, but you can also watch each interview on drunkastro.com. There's a whole page there for it, and I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year. Because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you. And there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay, I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert, about how to feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. I'm not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our lists, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a beach body super trainer and longevity expert because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming Every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your, your um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe, enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be, there's no way by... Using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need, okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. This is Astrology in Motion. So that's what that's what I I want to do with drunk astrology always is share astrology in motion, show how you can use it um, to you know to really strategize your life and your decisions and the timing of your decisions, um, but also when real life moments come up to be transparent and. You know, thank you for, you know, those of you that know that my family's from Kentucky and reached out and asked if they were okay. Um, That means a lot. Um, And forward we go and forward we move. And we are still under that Venus-Pluto conjunction from Saturday. And being that Venus and Pluto are both in Capricorn, you know, we get really serious. And Pluto is the underworld. We go beneath the surface. 
and um, dive deep and reflect. And we really go into an energy of reflection this week because Venus stations retrograde this Sunday. So she will station on Sunday at 2.36 a.m. Pacific, and she will be retrograde until January 29th. And while retrograde, she's going to make another connection to Pluto on Christmas Day. And then when she stations direct on the 29th of January, um, come March 3rd, she will make her third and final connection to Pluto. But since we're talking about Capricorn energy, uh, Mercury also joins this Capricorn story today. He entered Capricorn at 9.52 a.m. Pacific time, uh, December 13th, and he's going to be there until January 1st, but then, because he has an upcoming retrograde, he will go back into Capricorn January 25th through February 14th, and then he'll station direct on the 14th, um, and he'll be... um, He'll get, be getting back into Aquarius. So being that he's going to be part of the story too, Venus gave us the first clue, the first idea of this or this first opportunity, this first agreement or communication or transformation or change. She She's giving us still, still, we're still in orb. I'll give it to tomorrow. Um, for that Venus-Pluto conjunction to kind of reveal itself to you, where you're being asked to change, where you're being asked to transform. Um, If it's some kind of opportunity that came up, you know, this is an opportunity that's going to be at play and be at work all the way through um, March of 22. But now that Mercury is involved in the story, he is going to make a connection. He's going to make three connections to Pluto as well, one on December 30th, January 28th, and February 11th. So Venus gave you the idea, the first opportunity, the first deal, the first agreement, or reveal. And now, now that the story has begun, now we start working with this story for the next few months. Mercury, when he makes his first conjunction to Pluto on December 30th, he'll come and actually deliver some news. He'll deliver an update. Um, and Venus will have made her second conjunction to Pluto by then on the 25th. So we get different versions of this, of this story. So just know that if it was, if it did show up for you in the, um, in the, the way of an opportunity, and if it wasn't quite right, if you kind of needed to go back, if you needed to say no, or if you needed to say, Hmm, let me think, let me revise this. Um, The next version shows up around Christmas. Mercury will come and say, okay, how do we feel about the deal now? Or it'll come, another opportunity comes um, that actually might be more what you're looking for. Um, And then Mercury will continue to adjust that plan. So really, we are working with this deep, beneath the surface, transformation, change. um, And we're working with it in different ways. So there's different stages different iterations of this story that are going to take place. So just just know that, and while Venus gears up to retrograde, and then not too soon after her, Mercury, we're also being asked to reflect. And we know, too, that when we know it with Mercury, but more so when Venus retrogrades, we know that that's when pesky exes can just rear their ugly heads. <laughs> With with Venus in Capricorn, we, we're talking about old love, we're talking about old money, um, old money relationships, old bosses, old authority figures, old, you know, um, old father figures and, fa- you know, father stories um, come at play. And, um, you know, we're just being asked to reflect. And um, it's up to you, you know, re- retrogrades do a lot, but... If anything, they ask us to slow down. They ask us to take our time. They ask us to revise. All our favorite RE words come into focus. 
and revisit being one of those words. And if one of those exes shows up or an old boss or an old colleague, an old work affiliate, um, if someone um, in those arenas pop up, you know, the retrograde is an opportunity to revisit the relationship, um, to re redefine the terms of the relationship. If it is something, you know, it, if you pick up the phone now, listen, if it's not safe, if it's not, if it's not a relationship you want to revisit, then by all means, you can ignore the phone call. You can block the number. You can block the Instagram, block the Facebook, you know, you know, it's totally up to you, but it is an opportunity to revisit. And if, you know, if closure is one of those themes that you feel like, um, are is is kind of up for you in certain relationships, then this is an opportunity for you to reach out. But just know that um, there's a lot of potent energy, and if you don't get a response, don't take it personal. There just is a lot of um, there's a lot of energy going on. But you know, just keep your eyes and ears open uh, for those um, stories around um, old money situations. Um, you know, old relationships, you know, all of that. Um, just keep your eyes and ear open, and it is totally up to you. You have full authority in your life to pick up the phone and to have the conversation or to not. So that's totally up to you. Um, just know that this week in general, this is a more quiet week when it comes to planetary aspects, but we are in the last week of eclipses. And as I've shared with you, um, just because we're under the new moon in Sagittarius d does not mean that that Taurus lunar eclipse is not still potent and active. When we're in eclipse season, anything goes. Okay, so we're not really following that two weeks of a full moon, two weeks of a new moon general rule book that we do um, when it's not eclipses. Okay, so we can... You know, Taurus lunar eclipses are about loss and release and letting go. And solar eclipses are, you know, they're new moons. So they're optimistic. They're calling in. They're, you know, an opportunity to invite new things in. Um, but it, it, when we're just in these seasons, it's just, it, it's, it's powerful and it's potent and it's, um, it's transformative. And this week... Thankfully, we actually exit eclipse season. We have a Gemini full moon this Saturday, December 18th at 8.36 p.m., which will usher us out of eclipse season. Oh, another all in favor. Say aye, aye. Um, really ready for that. But the very next day, we have Venus stationing retrograde. We have Chiron, the asteroid of the wounded healer in Aries stationing to go direct on Sunday just a few hours after Venus um, at 8.33 in the morning. So Chiron's been taking us back on a wound story since July 15th and now come up, coming up to December 19th. He's going he's gonna to station to move forward and we've, we've gone on a journey with Chiron retrograde in Aries. How has the wound affected just who we are, how we show up, our personas, our identity. How has that story, for, you know, the wounds that we carry with us for a lifetime, how, how have they, you know, we've been reflecting on that now and we've gone through an emotional journey and now Chiron stops and says, okay, I'm ready for the next chapter of moving forward. So that part is... That part is nice. Um, we have on Monday, uh, today, um, in addition to Mercury entering Capricorn, we have Mars entering Sagittarius, which he did at 1.53 a.m. Pacific. Mars leaving Scorpio and entering Sagittarius makes him way more optimist optimistic. Sorry for the little, the little lag there. There was... Um, the technical difficulties, you know, there's clearly Neptune in the sky uh, mucking up <laughs> all of this. But yes, Mars entering Sagittarius makes him way more optimistic, visionary, focused on growth, the future, education. So while he's here until January 24th, 
you know, we should all feel a little bit more uplifted, a little more, oh, a little more um, optimistic about the future. And if there is any kind of online course that you want to sign up, that you want to create, anything about you stepping into um, being an entrepreneur and starting your own business and working in that way. Uh, Mars entering Sagittarius is great, especially while he's here for the next several weeks. Um, so that should be that should be nice. Now, even though the week is relatively quiet, other than the the shift in energy that comes with two planets shifting signs, right? So Mars jumping into Sag, and then Mercury jumping out of Sag and into Capricorn. Um, we are still in this, you know, last week of eclipses. But with this Gemini full moon, talk about reflection, this weekend has a real, real uh, call to reflect back. And this Gemini full moon on Saturday takes us back to the new moon solar eclipse that took place June 10th of 2021. So if you think back to... June, the little midsection of June, there was a lot going on. <laughs> like, you know, I think everyone can kind of is in agreement there, um, especially when I talk to clients about, you know, June and certain times of this year. Um, but February and June being, you know, two of those months where you're like, okay, let's look, let's, let's take a little deep dive. But back in June, uh, something started. There was a story there that began um, that is uh, attached to your Gemini Sagittarius eclipse story um, that began May, June, and early July of 2020. But now this, this in particular, this full moon that we have this week uh, takes us back to say, hey, okay, let's figure out, you know, what, what's culminating, what's coming up, what's, um, what's coming to... You know, how's how's there like an ending involved or how is there, um, you know, what's worked, what's not? And this is a nice little segue here. I'll give you my story. Back in June is when I started the the line of candles, the Zodiac Superlative candles that I sell. And I created uh, the candles as a private label situation first. I met a candle maker and I helped create scents for all 12 signs. And that was it. Then I made orders. Well, <laughs> six months later, <laughs> the story now goes, your astrologer is now officially a candle maker. <laughs> that whole situation dissolved over the last six months. I found out in September, just after my birthday, that she no longer made candles anymore. And I have gone through a journey since mid-September. So we're talking about September, October, October, November, November. We're talking about three months of research, of figuring out how to do this, where to go, how do I create blends. So now, all of that to say, <laughs> those of you that are listeners and you have been on the wait list for your candles, guess what? You should have... Except for Libras. Libra's the only one I don't have my blend yet. Um, well, for the ones that have been sold out. So um, those of you who have been on the wait list and patiently waiting, you should have received an email last night. Candles are back in stock, baby, but they are all new and they are handmade by your astrologer right here. So they are still the coconut wax blend. They are now double cotton wicks. They are completely new fragrances. Um, they are so much more well-rounded and full-bodied. And some of the candles I have changed, just altered their superlatives just a little bit. Um, and But all new scents for all 12 signs. Um, I am still... I still have a few left of some of the um, the first batch. So if you, let's see, I think it's Cancer, Capricorn, and Leo, I think might be it. There might be one Taurus in there, maybe. Um, there's less than 10 candles left from my first, from the first batch. So those have the wood wick, 
and all the others now that I'm now moving forward have two cotton wicks and new fragrance blends and I'm so proud I'm proud of I'm proud of both of them um, but that was the starting point that uh, that midsection of June this year and now coming full circle going from private label to knowing nothing about making candles to now having gone through <laughs> <laughs> a crash course in how to make candles thanks to the my friend Jen at Phoebe Peacock here in Burbank, California, who, you know, I, I went to and said, hey, I'm in this predicament. I need to make, I need to get candles and the, all that. She was like, okay, well, it's just like one of those, you know, give a man fish or teach a man to fish. And so she taught me how to fish, and now I make candles. So my studio now is a candle-making studio. <laughs> and my friend Jen at Phoebe Peacock helps me make the fragrance blends. She's a perfumer, and she knows way more about scents and blends than I do. So she is who I collaborated with to make each scent for all 12 signs, and she has been a trooper with me. Because some of these signs, as they have been in my life, have been pains in the behind to perfect. <laughs> and I'll, I'll give more info about which signs those were later. Um, but um, that all that to say, if you are wanting Christmas gifts and Astro-inspired Christmas gifts, get your orders in ASAP. I priority ship everything, so... Here in the States and Canada, things should arrive in two to three days after they are shipped. So we, are, we should still be in good, um, a good time uh, as far as like, you know, the holiday rush and online ordering and the post office and all of that. We should be good because I do priority, um, priority shipping. But get your orders in sooner than later because, one, the stock is going fast already and because there, there were over 60 people on wait list. <laughs> <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? If you want to get your orders in, get them in. Um, and now that I am doing this myself, and from start to finish, from melting the wax to blending the fragrance to applying the labels, cleaning the jars, warning labels, and, and just everything, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for everyone that has been supportive of Drunk Astrology and we really are a small business, especially on the product side. This is my first bout at ever doing anything with products. So it means a lot to me to have your support, a lot for me to receive your messages and your orders and just everything. It, it really does mean a lot. And I, I'm especially right now with everything I've shared today, just in a place of gratitude where I'm just really appreciative of just, you know, the community that, that I've been able to build so far with Drunk Astrology. And we're only going up from here, okay? And we're all going to go together. And I couldn't do it without each and every one of you who is supportive. And even by just subscribing to this podcast and uh, adding a download, you know, eventually when I get past 200 downloads a week, I'll be able to monetize the podcast. And you know, it, 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 it's like it's all – everything means everything. So even if you're just a listener and you're, you know, you're not buying a reading, you're not – whatever, just know that by listening right now, you are actually supporting this business, and I really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate it. Um, it, means a, it means a lot, and more than words can, can justify. So I've been long-winded. And we still haven't discussed the moons. So let's get to the moons. Today, December 13th, the moon is in Aries, going void at 6.52 p.m. All times I give you are Pacific Standard, so make sure you adjust for your time zones. The Aries moon goes void tonight with a sextile to Jupiter. So positive, flowy, um, forward motion there. On uh, Tuesday the 14th, the moon enters Taurus at 12.11 a.m. Has, uh, let's see... Mm, has nice aspects, a little bit of an adjustment to Saturn uh, Tuesday night at 8.36 p.m. Other than that, nice uh, flowy aspects on Tuesday. Wednesday, quiet day. Taurus moon only makes one sextile to Neptune, so really dreamy, flowy. Um, great day to just, you know, enjoy yourself, you know, treat yourself. Good food, 
good rest, nice blanket, um, and, you know, just a good day to just get things done because the moon's not really doing too much and there's no planetary action. Now, remember, we are still in eclipses, so there's always that disclaimer uh, in weeks like this. Next week, we, we shift out of that, but, you know, for this week, we still have to add that disclaimer. And then Thursday the 16th, the Taurus moon goes void at 8.08 a.m. with a square to Jupiter. So it does make, even though Tuesday has um, relatively like nice aspects, except for that um, square to Saturn, um, and the quietness of Taurus, the Taurus moon on Wednesday, it does make this square to Jupiter, the closing aspect, it does make those two and a half days a little bit like there there's a lot to do right so we probably have the space to get things done but the square to jupiter maximizes it can maximize stress and maximize to-do list maximize things that we have to check off so just keep that in mind um take your time but you know just if you find yourself in in a in a place of like this is too much, just kind of give yourself some some time to breathe, and um, you know enjoy a nice snack. You know, Taurus moons are great for food, um, beverage, and um, you know connection. Then on at twelve forty three p.m. on Thursday the sixteenth, the moon enters Gemini. It does have a separation to Mars at five fifty six p.m. Thursday night. Um, but then on Friday, the moon is in Gemini, making nice aspects all day. Just three all together, two um, are nice and flowy and great. And then on the 18th, the Gemini full moon takes place at 8.36 p.m., taking us out of eclipses. And also uh, on Saturday, we enter the orb for the third and final Saturn-Uranus square, which takes place next week, but we give Saturn five days before and five days after. So we're building up to that third and final moment of clarity and direction that we've been working with, that tug of war we've been feeling all year long. So there's that, and that Gemini moon goes void just after the full moon at 10.02 p.m. with a trine to Jupiter. So that does make that Gemini moon very nice, very expansive, very collaborative, very juicy, very positive. We really, really like that um, that closing aspect for that Gemini full moon. So it's it's a welcome reprieve, but also an opportunity for dialogue, for discussion. Suns in Sag, moons in Gemini. Let's talk about Let's just, let's talk, let's talk, let's discuss, let's create a dialogue, um, and let's communicate, let's listen to one another. Um, so so w when when we're dealing with the, the energy of the weekend, which is that full moon plus now Sundays, Venus retrograde and Chiron direct, and the sun sextile Jupiter, which is really flowy, really positive, really expansive, um, you know, let's take advantage of that energy with that Gemini full moon to to create dialogue and to share stories um, as you reflect and and listen you know listen to listen to uh, other people's stories and what they've been going through recently because it's been really potent and powerful for everyone then on Sunday the moon enters cancer at 142 a.m has a lot of adjusting aspects all day Sunday so just keep in mind that that cancer moon is very emotional and can be a little more volatile and it's making all these adjustment aspects to Mars to Chiron to Mercury to Saturn uh, so that's a that's a busy day uh, with the other planetary actions taking place and that cancer moon goes void on Tuesday the 21st with an opposition to Venus. So there's a little, you know, emotional tug of war there. Venus is in Capricorn looking for groundedness and sturdiness and seriousness, and the Cancer moon is just emotional and um, having to deal with a lot. So just, you know, go easy. Um, if you can offload on under the Cancer moon on Sunday, that's, that's a good day to kind of offload. Um, and that's it, everyone. Um, thank you so much for bearing with me. There's been um, a lot of activity that's just been going on while this podcast has uh, been recorded. So thanks for hanging in. Um, I know a lot came up there in the beginning, but, you know, full disclosure. Um, last thing that I do want to share, if you're still here, the podcast is now available on Facebook Podcast, but it's only available on the mobile app. So if you do... 
Um, if you have people that are really savvy on Facebook, but not so much in the in the podcast, and they're interested in um, astrology and drunk astrology, you can divert them to the Facebook app on mobile devices and go to Drunk Astrology's page. There's a podcast tab. And what's really cool about it is that you can actually find your favorite clip of each episode and you can share like a, I think it's like up to a 30 second clip, um, which is really, which is a really cool feature. I haven't my, done it myself yet, but I think it's really cool. And also just another friendly reminder that if you want to be a Drunk Astro Insider, click the link in the show notes or just go to DrunkAstro.com and you'll see a block there to put your email in. Um, weekly horoscopes and product launches and all all kinds of updates go to insiders first and foremost. Um, and again, if you want to get some um, Astro Gifts for loved ones or white elephants or secret Santas. I got Zodiac superlative candles. We got Zodiac beanies and um, reading gift cards. They're all available and ready for you to um, give the gift of astrology. Sending big love to all of you. I'm not sure about live readings on Wednesday yet as I'm still waiting to see what my schedule is going to look like um, with everything um, going on. So thank you all again. Sending big hugs, big love to all of you, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? From learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles, to seeing it in real time, in motion? Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.